بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صوت مسموع كده يا فندم مسموع يا دكتور عبد الخالق ويا ريت الزملاء اللي هم مش بيقدموا دلوقتي يحطوا نفسهم على ميوت جاست ان كيس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ماي سبجكت توداي از ذا فيري امبورتنت ديزيز ذا نون الكوهوليك فاتي ليفر ديزيز We will present the new definition for this disease to be metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease or muffled. My agenda will include the consequences of using the consequences of using inappropriate disease nomenclature. Then the algorithm for diagnostic workup for this new definition, muffled, the advantage for the new definition, and the conclusion. Before going to this change, I will make a short resume about this very important disease and its relation to our uh, very important disease also the type of diabetes. The non-alcoholic novel, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is uh, defined as steatosis in more than 5% of hepatocytes with lack of secondary causes of fatty liver. The prevalence all over the world globally is very high, it's about 20 to 30 percent in the general population. The non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is considered as the hepatic component of the metabolic syndrome. And recently, it has a relation to all the component of the metabolic syndrome. Most important is its relation to type 2 diabetes when it's present in about 70 to 80 percent of the diabetic and in morbid obese patient it's more or less about 100 percent. The presence of this very important association makes nothing a further comorbidity type 2 diabetes and the presence of nothing is independently related to increased cardiovascular disease cerebrovascular, cardiovascular, and the peripheral vascular also increase in the cancer incidence, especially the hepatocellular cancer. Here is the natural history of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Most cases are just simple steatosis. In this condition, it's not associated with impaired survival, and the most of the cases are stable disease. Very, very rarely, non cirrhotic HCC can occur. On the other hand, we have about 10% in the form of hepatosteatitis, non alcoholic steatohepatitis. This 10%, one third of them will go to fibrosis. One third of the fibrotic will be cirrhotic, and 10% of this cirrhotic will decompensate, and 1 to 2% of the cirrhotics will have HCC, hepatocellular cancer. About the pathogenesis of this disease, most recently it is more or less about to. Uh, uh, except that there is a triadic lesion, PL pathogenesis of NASH. First is hepatocyte injury, the stressed leading lipid hepatocyte. The hepatocyte will be stressed by very big amount of lipids, which will lead to lipoapoptosis and the cell death. This process will enhance inflammatory cells and the macrophage-mediated inflammation. 
this inflammatory process will enhance the hepatic stellate cell activation, then fibrosis, cirrhosis, and the other hazards. Unfortunately, we have pediatric novels in obese children. Now, to go to our uh, issue, the new definition of this important disease, we will show the consequence of using inappropriate disease nomenclature, the algorithm for diagnostic workup for muffled, the advantages for the new definition, and then the conclusion. Regarding the consequences of inappropriate nomenclature, the hazard disease al uh, Hamagitan, Arbain Sana, Arbain Sana. The disease has stayed with the prefix non, non alcoholic fatty liver disease. Non implying that it is, it is <laughs> just. <laughs> خلوني كو هوست بس دكتوره يا ناس الصوت مفتوح عندك اقفلي الصوت هو لا مش مسموح so the consequences of the inappropriate name I said that for 40 years since the disease has stayed with the prefix non non alcoholic fatty liver disease non implying that it is just an outlier of main stream condition the current definition of NOFLD requires the exclusion of other causes of liver diseases and of a daily significant amount of alcohol, a very important problem. So we should eliminate alcohol from both the name and definition. This will open the door to develop and implement a set of positive criteria to define the condition rather than relying on a non or negative definition. Also, this nomenclature makes confusion and mistrust between patient and the physician, the stigma, under treatment of disease, limited acceptance of treatment options, and suboptimal allocation of funding and resources. To make this third point more clear, here is the patient and the physician perspectives, confusion. The patient said, I want to know what is my disease is not what it is not. If it is not an alcohol related, what is it due to? A recent study indicated that patient have a general lack of understanding of his, his disease and do not seem familiar with the consequences of Nuffield in the long term. Second is stigmatization. Many have both religious prohibition on alcohol consumption and social discouragement of drinking. Because of the association of the current name with alcohol use, Nuffield result in significant stigma in the society. Third is trivialization. The term Nuffield trivialized the problem by including terms such as none. This can be interpreted that the disease is not serious, زي ما كنا بناخد الكورونا في الأول. وبالتالي عندنا هنا many of the patients avoid the biopsy. They delay, there will be delay in diagnosis and this prevent early intervention. There will be compound human suffering and financial burden. So, what is the present status? Very recently, in April this year, a consensus of international experts proposed that the disease acronym may be changed from NOFL to metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease or MUFLD. This change goes far beyond mere semantic revision and maybe the first step that catalyzes the process to better conceptualize the disease for health promotion, patient orientation, case identification 
ongoing clinical trials and for health service delivery. MAFIL is both comprehensive and simple and is independent of other liver disease. Given our current understanding of the pathogenesis of, of MAFIL and its rising prevalence, <coughs> Positive criteria to diagnose the disease are required. It's proposed that the disease assessment and stratification of severity should extend beyond simple dichotomous classification to steatohepatitis versus non steatohepatitis. Here is the proposed algorithm for diagnostic workup for muffin. As we know, hepatic steatosis in adults can be detected either by imaging, blood biomarkers, scores, or by liver histology, most probably detected by imaging, simple ultrasound. In this situation, we will have three positions. Either our patient is overweight or obesity, defined as BMI equal or more 25 kilogram per square meter in Caucasians or BMI equal or more than 23 kilogram per square meters in Asia. So first situation, overweight or obesity. Second is presence of type two diabetes according to international criteria. If any of these two, we have muffled. But if we have lean or normal weight, as defined in Caucasian or Asian, here we should have the presence of two or more of metabolic risk abnormalities. The waist circumference, as defined in Caucasian, men and women or Asian, the blood pressure equal or more 130 over 85, or the patient is under specific drug treatment, plasma triglyceride equal or more 150, or the patient under specific drug treatment, plasma HDL cholesterol less than 40 milligram per deciliter, for men and 50 for a woman, or the patient is under specific drug treatment, presence of pre-diabetes as we define, or presence of HOMA insulin resistance score equal or more 2.5, and finally, presence of high sensitivity C active protein level more than two milligrams. So this very important slide, the diagnosis will be very simple without exclusion of other disease, just to detect steatosis. Overweight, diabetes, this is muffled. Lean, normal weight, we should add two or more of these risk abnormalities. Very interesting, what is the past, present, and the future? لهذا التغيير اللي احنا عملناه. سنة 1845 the term fatty liver disease was first used and it was just fatty liver without any classification. 1980 اتخطى الترم بتاع النفض ناش was first point وبقى عندي النان الكحوليك فاتي ليفر ديزيز باسمه اللي تعبنا الفترة اللي فاتت والالكحوليك فاتي ليفر ديزيز and we should exclude هذا الالكحوليك to diagnose this نفلت and also exclude other disease and the classification was just steatosis or NASH في 2020 زي ما قلنا 
we do the renaming the disease by the international consensus to muffle. بهذا الشكل استفدنا الآتي. Advantage for this definition. First, we can put all the cases in one diagnosis muffled, the lean subject. Also, we now make the diagnosis of cirrhosis related to this disease is muffled related cirrhosis and not cryptogenic cirrhosis زي ما كنا بنقول الأول. النقطة نمرة ثلاثة والمهمة جدا إن الوقت في أدوية كثيرة بتنزل عشان هذا الديزيز ف ال current end point for the clinical trials which require improvement of NASH اتشالت يعني الأوبيتو كوليك أسيد كان ال end point بتاعت الفيبروزس وصلنا لها لكن بتاعت النش لا بعد خروج الناش من القضية هيبقى في تسهيل للأدوية اللي نازلة. النقطة الثالثة واللي منتهى الأهمية الـ other liver diseases ما بقاش مطلوب مننا to exclude عشان ندياجنوز المفلد. The presence of other liver diseases زي الألكحول أو الـ HCV أو غيره بقى اسمها plus minus other liver disease we presence of dual liver disease مفلد. With alcohol, muffled with HCV, and so on. Finally, what about the future? The functional diet, the patient sub phenotyping, be worried in that I struggle on it. According to diet, alcohol microbiota or the genetic, epigenetic, or metabolic health. To clarify this last point. We have this slide, which is still without reference. This will be our MENA region paper for this issue muffled. It is about to uh, be printed recently. So we consider muffled as an umbrella term. We, have, we know that heterogeneity is present in muffled. There is various variables, including age, gender, genetic, epigenetic, gut microbiota, and the metabolic health. These shape the heterogeneity in muffled. Wabitali, the term is likely an umbrella for multiple phenotypes with differential clinical presentation, course of disease, and therapeutic response. And the deconvolution of this heterogeneity is a key step in implementing a personalized management for patients with MAF. Ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion is that the statistics for MAF and related conditions are alarming and represent an urgent call to action to tackle this disease. The term muffled is more appropriate to describe metabolic fatty liver disease and to apply the positive criteria suggested for diagnosis. Also avoid stigmatization, trivialization, and lack of patient awareness and can serve as a catalyst to increase funding and health policy. In turn, such positive change in attitude should derive bitter disease management improve patient outcome and as well more effectively link them to treatments for the likely extra hepatic consequence of this multifaceted disease. And thank you very much. بشكر دكتور عبد الخالق حامد وطبعا خلوني ارحب بحضراتكم Uh, في أول meeting للأربيك Association for the study of diabetes and metabolism uh, تحت رعاية uh, نقابة العمل الأطباء ودي حاجة الحقيقة إحنا بنتشرف بيها جدا uh, وطبعا خلوني أشكر أستاذة دكتورة رانيا العيسوي على التعاون وبشكر السادة الأساتذة اللي النهاردة